Hello and welcome to Jamaica TV, where we give you all the latest news. Now for the details. The trial of alleged members of the one Dan faction of the Klansmen gang has stalled as two of the accused gangsters have tested positive for COVID-19. The matter has been adjourned until October 19th. The defendants, Andre Golden and Owen Arms, will receive their positive test results late Monday, forcing Chief Justice Brian Skies to make the adjournment in a keenly watched trial. The accused men were housed at the St. Catherine lockup where coronavirus cases have reportedly been discovered. On Monday, the trial has failed to get underway and was adjourned until Tuesday, as the two accused should have known their COVID-19 status by then. Before the initial adjournment, Sky has lamented that mouth after the onset of coronavirus pandemic in Jamaica, police stations have not been equipped with the relevant technology to connect to court via video link. The Chief Justice announced that he would be pressing for all police stations to have video link technology as remote errands will likely continue after the pandemic. The six-hour outage at Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp was a headache for many casual users, but far more serious for the millions of people worldwide who rely on social media sites to run their businesses or communicate with relatives, fellow parents, teachers, or neighbors. When all three services went dark Monday, it was a stark reminder of the power and reach of Facebook which owns the photo sharing and messaging apps. Around the world, the loss of WhatsApp left many at loss. In Brazil, the messaging service is by far the most widely used app in the country, installed on 99% of all smartphones. It is essential for communication such as friends, family business, customers, school, and everyday transactions such as ordering food. Even the courts had trouble making appointments and phone lines became overwhelmed. One woman who is unemployed was depending on money from relatives actually stopped at a repair shop in Port-au-Prince thinking her phone was malfunctioning. She became frustrated. Meanwhile, for some businesses, the Facebook and Instagram outage meant hundreds or thousands of dollars in lost revenue. Three to four bookings might have been lost for booking of photo sessions at $200, a report stated. A lot of people only had a specific window when they can do ordering and booking and things like that. It was reported, if they can't get a direct answer, they go elsewhere. Member of Parliament for St. Catherine East Central, Alando Talong, is using state agency to do more to develop the infrastructures in parts of the constituency. He pointed out two communities in Gregory Park, known as Gulf in Mexico, as needing urgent attention. He said the areas are under threat from the disease of fallen crime. He expressed that challenges the police faces. For all their efforts, the police are limited by the labyrinth of zinc and choppy getaway paths in some communities that offenders use to evade the law, he said. He was contributing to the State of Constituency debate in the House of Representatives recently. The Member of Parliament, who is also State Minister for Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, said that proper community planning and the provision of decent housing are some of the best tools we have in the fight against crime. He said he will continue to work with partners at the National Housing Trust, NHT, of Jamaica and the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, in the hope they will fund a radical multi-million dollar project to tear down the zinc fences from our communities to rebuild our inner cities and make them navigable communities that afford our people the peace and security they need. Sandal Resorts International has kicked off its 40th anniversary celebration to recognize its success and honor the legacy of its founder, the late Gordon Wood Stewart. The company on Monday announced a raft of initiatives and programs that targeting Caribbean communities, team members, as well as guests and stakeholders in the travel trade. This year marks an incredible milestone for Sandals Resorts, and it's especially meaningful as we take this moment to honor what my father created 
and carry on its revered legacy across the Caribbean," said SRI Executive Chairman Adam Stewart. Chief among the initiatives announced by Sandals is the construction of the Gordon Wood Stewart International School of Hospitality and Tourism at the University of the West Indies, in conjunction with Florida International University's Chaplin School of Hospitality and Tourism Management. Sandals said. The new Gordon Wood Stewart International School of Hospitality and Tourism would develop the next generation of international tourism and hospitality leadership through fully accredited undergraduate and graduate programs. The new school will be located on the western campus of the UI Mona in the resort town of Montego Bay. My father believed in learning by experience on the job training, as he often put it, said Stewart. As a consummate entrepreneur and a lifelong dreamer, a new success was born beyond the boardroom, found instead in the moments of exploration and discovery. It's this drive that will inspire the world-class curriculum, putting students in a real-world experience as part of their development. Investment in education has long been a priority of SRI, and the new school will complement the Sandals Corporate University. Which was established to provide Caribbean-based Sandals team members with opportunities to improve and develop occupational skills and earn undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. More than 100 frontline healthcare workers and member of Parliament Floyd Green's Saint Elizabeth South Western constituency are to benefit from a special $750,000 COVID-19 relief grant. According to release, the grant has been facilitated by a fintech company. Why pay in partnership with Green and other collaborators to reward healthcare workers who have been hard at work during the pandemic? Each will receive an amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars, which will be available by a special QR code sent by email or text message, which will be scanned and recognized as cash. He noted that the aim is to take the digital payment process islandwide, making Black River the first point of implementation. The grant is from YPay, and we are drawing down from one million dollar US to allocate for the Caribbean region. It has been done in Trinidad, Grenada, Barbados, and now Jamaica. Instead of check or cash, which is said to be a super spreader of COVID-19 virus, YPay is using a technology to facilitate the distribution of funds. Health Education Officer for the Saint Elizabeth Health Department. Expressed her appreciation for the grant and said it would help out in many ways. It was pointed out the important part healthcare workers have played in this pandemic. MP Floyd Green stressed that these essential service personnel need to be recognized and awarded for their invaluable service. They are caring for those who are ill and also working tremendously on things like contact tracing, spreading awareness, and the vaccine rollout. So I thought it was very important to say thank you and show our appreciation in a very tangible way," he said.